start, so I guess we... I think you, you accomplished <laughs> that goal. Yeah, it, it was... Uh, well, I don't say it was really that easy, but we got some big plays at the beginning, and uh, you sometimes always worry as a coach, was it too easy or whatever, but you still got to give your kids credit as long as they're playing hard. You talked all week long before the game that Northwestern defensively came up, played you hard, played you tight, gambled a lot, and you knew you were going to be able to hit some big plays, didn't you, going in? Right, and we backed them off, I think, Jim, a little early uh, after we hit a couple of those, a big run and a, a long pass, obviously. And I think what they did is, is they went a little more conservative, but you saw a lot of bad plays in there, Jim, where they got us for negative yards. This is the way to start a game. Now, this is what you call great coaching, Jim. Right there. <laughs> yeah, great coaching. Throw it to Desmond and let him run by some people. And that was your first offensive play from scrimmage. It gives you a 7 nothing lead. And then they helped you out, too. you got to say that right. much in that big we, lead We thought early. we'd get one of these, though, Jim. We thought we'd block a kick. And then uh, right here, Coleman Wallace comes through, blocks a kick, puts it on their 40-yard line. And then we come right back and get a big run from Ricky Powers off the right side. And uh, Ricky, I thought, had a great good day. He didn't have enough carries. I think he only had 11 carries. But he gained 80-some yards right here. He just about goes all the way and makes it on the next play. You knew you could run on these guys, even though they were up to stop the run? Well, on, on certain defenses. But other defenses, we had to throw the ball out there. I was a little surprised after the game that Elvis only got 16 throws. Uh, so they were taking the pass away and trying to camouflage things a little better than I thought they might. 14 nothing after Ricky Powers touchdown. They come back, fumble again. You got the ball in great field position. Good field position. And then, you know, again, uh, the key here is to take advantage of it. And we come around with the reverse with first with Desmond. This was a great run. This was hard to see, Jim, but he actually dodged us two people. There great he gets great loose. coaching, right? Right. Yeah, that <laughs> part. But he, he gets loose there, and uh, Desmond, what he does is accelerates well in the hole. Then here, we tried this twice in a row. The first one was incomplete, but Elvis hits Yale going down the middle here because that's an example of what you talked about earlier, the heavy defenses where you have to throw the ball a little bit. Then uh, we give it to Ricky here, and he bounces in from about five or six out. So, so the game's five minutes old. You're up 21-0. What are you thinking on the sideline? I'm thinking uh, just so they don't score a lot of points right now. <laughs> Maybe the only thing. Here's the big miscue, and Desmond drops his punt and gives them field position. And here, you know, you got to say that we kind of set this up for them, but here's where you like to have your defense come in and stop them. I thought this was probably the worst that our defense had done all day. You open in a quick change situation like that, your defense got to step up, stop them, get the ball back. Right. And I think we're going to get them stopped there, except. Uh, we had a miscue on the coverage there. They ran a motion play, and we bumped off on the motion and shouldn't have. And we let a guy wide open. Come back. Now Jesse Johnson's at tailback. And again, that heavy defense hit him with a little delay play, right. and it gets big yards. A little draw there, and we blocked their semi-blitz. And uh, I can get you here. Jesse makes a fine catch. Elvis made a good throw. Good peel block there. I think that was Joe Cacuzzo and Jesse down the sideline on the screen. Now, Northwestern stops you in this instance, so you get J.D. Carlson in to kick a 51-yarder. It just barely gets over, but it's good to see him make that. Because he's been struggling. This is going to help his confidence. He has been, and he had hit one earlier that was about the same distance, and it was just off to the right. But he made, you know, he made stronger kicks today. His contact was much better. And here they come back, and now we're going to get another break. They dropped the ball on a kickoff, and uh, so we get a good break here. Good break indeed at 24 to 7. They give you the ball right back. We go to the second quarter. Jesse Johnson with the ball. Right, and Jesse breaks outside here and kind of a little easy there because he had most of the people blocked, but he made a good cut to the outside and put it all together and it gives us 31 points. You talked about the defense earlier. Well, they played strong uh, in most situations. Uh, Len they Williams did. is a tough quarterback to handle. He is, and there Brian Townsend stops him on the option play, and as you indicate, he can make some uh, things happen as Williams get. Here Elvis makes an excellent throw just over the arms of the defender on third and I think 11 or so, Jim. And Ricky Powers uh, gets down the sideline on the screen for 30-some yards. That gets you out of big trouble. Then you go back to the ground game, and Greg McThomas breaks one. Right. Greg's, uh, you know, he needs, he fills in for Bernie now that Bernie's back and healthy. And he just needs more snaps and more experience, and he's going to be good. Here we have a mix-up in the backfield, and our backs go the uh, wrong direction. But Elvis is still able to hit Van Dyne on the sideline with the big pass. 
And back to the tailback again is the running game again. I think because of the strong defense, you can see once you break that first line and you're into the secondary, it's tough. Right. And our, our backs did a better job in the secondary this week. And Ricky gets it down there and Jesse runs in and uh, scores another touchdown. So I think our backs operated in the secondary maybe the best they had done all year. Fourth and one here. Uh, Tyrone Wheatley, your third of three tailbacks who right. were featured against Northwestern. He did a good job breaking some tackles this week. He, he's getting more confidence, a young player coming in and things. He, uh, here he makes an excellent run. He stops, jukes a couple people, and just gets inside the corner of the end zone. So he had a nice run there. 45 to 7 is the score at halftime. Now you're going into the locker room after basically inundating poor Northwestern. What are you thinking about going to the second half? Well, you want to make the same adjustments that you have had. And the, and the key now is to come out and don't let down and see if you can, you can create your own tempo all over again. And, and our thing was, and I told you this before, I'm getting frustrated because the second half, we always want to come out, take the ball down, and score and we three plays, and we have to punt the ball. Not a good way to no. open up the second half. Don't go away. We'll be back take a look at the second half highlights. But first, we hear from one of the Wolverines about... Guarding against that letdown going into the second half after such a big first half lead. That's what you have to guard against. There is slightly, uh, but then you have then you have to buckle yourself down and say, you know, we're still playing a football game. They're going to come after us and go play them. Okay. Well, Aga Khan certainly helped out his teammates. Uh, Michigan had to go to some new linemen up front defensively because you got some injuries and Nenef's Stood in there and did a pretty good job. Yes, Jim, and the thing we wanted to try this week is to see if uh, Buster Stanley could play out at the tackle position in the vacancy created through Hutchinson's injury. And so uh, we'll have to look and see what that happens, or, you know, what that looks like on film. Right, had the big lead going into the locker room at halftime. Your first possession, nothing happened, made you mad, so you kept the first team in for the second possession. Well, I wanted the first team to get a good drive, and here Yale Van Dyne about breaks one, goes about 40 yards or so, but uh, I knew I wanted them to get a little more playing time. You don't play, you play them for the reasons, I can't say practice, but you've got to keep their sharpness, and every guy's got to play so many plays. Bernie Leggett back, and he looks pretty good, even though the ankle was still a little ouchy, right? I, I think Bernie's uh, pretty good shape. Now, I'd, I'd have to say he's at least 90%. And we drive the ball down, then Ricky takes it in from about the two-yard line and uh, gets his second touchdown, I believe, of the day. 52-7 to seven at this point, for the most part, pretty much over. But I know in the fourth quarter, they go on a long drive, and this is maybe one of your biggest disappointments. Even though you got some young kids in the game, you still don't like to see this against your no, defense. No, I don't like to see this. I will say this is too long a drive, an 88-yard drive, them bringing the ball down. This shows you Williams can throw, and Benson, who is a very fine receiver. I don't. This one didn't bother me as much as the one after we dropped the punt because our first team was in there. But again, when you play as a second team or you play as a first team, you got to go in there and you got to complete the job and get it done. Then they get a roll out here, and this is what you don't like to see, a break contained by the quarterback. Right, young uh, outside linebacker in there, and he kind of bootlegs around and makes a, throws really a strike. We converged on the ball, but we uh, obviously just missed it. But we did come back with Tyrone Wheatley off right tackle for about 74 yards, and shows a little speed here. Oh. Well, that's the that's understatement. Again, that right there is still coaching. I mean, the, the moves and stuff, but the speed is coached. The understatement of the year shows a little speed right there. 59-14, uh, the win over Northwestern. You said three weeks ago after Indiana, when you went into the Purdue Northwestern week, we've got to get better no matter who we play, even though we're heavy favorites. Did that happen? I believe it did, Jim, and I'm proud to say that it happened because it is so important, and it's a thing that should propel us into the two big games now in Champaign and back home against Ohio State. But still, you know, it's that you can't get happy. You're still scoring at a higher rate than you're going to in these games. Defense is playing stronger, but our challenge is about doubled or tripled next yeah, week. You're still a little worried that maybe these two games were a little easier than you thought and maybe you wanted to get tested a little more before you head into Champaign. Right. The only thing I can say in our defense is we beat teams we were supposed to beat and we beat them by what I would say is a proper margin. So hopefully we're on track. But I can't believe that we're going to go to Champaign and have a big letdown because really, in essence, we're playing to go to the Rose Bowl. And if we win next week, we go to the Rose Bowl. So I expect to see a fired-up Michigan team. 
both at practice, which it has to be there, and then when we get to Champaign. But it's not going to be an easy game. No question, it's not going to be an easy game because anytime you play down in uh, Champaign Urbana, it's going to be tough because the Illini have one big one left, and if they beat Michigan, they could get a pretty good bowl game. Don't go away. We'll be back. Take a look at Michigan's big man up front. But first, we hear from the youngest of three tailbacks who talks about competing for playing time. I'm very happy with Jess scores. Uh, I'm very happy with Rick scores. Uh, one day I would just love for each one of us to have a 100-yard game, and that would make Mo very proud of us. So uh, there's no arguments going between us. Just at practice, it's just a lot of competition between us, and it make each other make make us that much better. This season, but it hasn't been without its trials. At six foot eight, 340 pounds, as a freshman, he was nicknamed the Barge. Expectations about his football career were huge. He's fought his way down for the coaches and the team so he could be quicker, and he's learned to live with other people's expectations. Neither was easy. Now, Skripnak, a preseason All-American, a four-year starter, a top NFL prospect, is still fighting expectations. According to some, he's not aggressive enough. You get to this aggressive part and see people saying, I have a lack of aggression. Well, coming as a freshman, I've, I've thought an offensive lineman is just supposed to fire out and come out at everyone and try to hit him as hard as he could. And I learned if you have that mentality, then you're falling on your face, um, flat on your face an awful lot. It's more of a controlled aggression. And um, I'm sure if you ask the guys that I face on defensive line, ask them if I'm not aggressive, you're going to get a different answer than if you ask a coach or if you ask a fan. And, you know, that's the bottom line. Because, uh, you know, ask the guy if he's, you know, flat on his back, if I'm not aggressive, then, you know, then I'll, you know, if he says I'm not, then I'm not. This aggression stuff, being more aggressive, has to be to a level where I could play rather than just being out of control and unbalanced. As you can sense, Greg Skrepnak is extraordinary, and not just in size. His growing up process has given him an awareness of himself and the position he plays. In my opinion, and, and the things if I watched, uh, an offensive lineman is probably the most skilled position you're going to find. Because you line a guy up in front of him and ask him to block a guy who angles, he slants, he twists, he turns. And you want to get in front of him, you got to have quick feet, you got to have great balance. And you got to have a great sense of where, you know, how, what play you're running in order to get the job done. So in that regards, I think that an offensive lineman is, is more skilled than a lot of what they say the skill positions are. Thoughtful and articulate, this big Wolverine has come a long way from a 340-pound 17-year-old kid to a 315-pound young man. And it clearly shows. It's like a storybook, to tell you the truth. It's gone... Um, you know, sometimes it's been, you know, I've hit my peaks and my valleys, but uh, it's gone where I can't have any complaints right now and I have no regrets. Greg Scrapnick couldn't have said it any better. Offensive line, one of the most skilled positions. Play and makes it on the next play. You knew you could run on these guys even though they were up to stop the run. Well, on, on certain defenses, but other defenses we had to throw the ball out there. I was a little surprised after the game that Elvis only got 16 throws. Uh, so they were taking the pass away and trying to camouflage things a little better than I thought they might. 14-0 after Ricky Powers touchdown. They come back, fumble again. You've got the ball in great field position. Good field position. And then, you know, again, uh, the key here is to take advantage of it. And we come around with the reverse with first with Desmond. This was a great run. This is hard to see, Jim, but he actually dodges two people. Then great he gets great coaching, right? Right. Yeah, that part. <laughs> But he, he gets loose there, and uh, Desmond, what he does is accelerates well in the hole. Then here we tried this twice in a row. The first one was incomplete, but Elvis hits Yale going down the middle here because that's an example of what you went in. Right, and we backed him off, I think, Jim, a little early uh, after we hit a couple of those, a big run and a, a long pass, obviously. And I think what they did is, is they went a little more conservative, but you saw a lot of bad plays in there, Jim, where they got us for negative yards. This is the way to start a game. Now, this is what you call great coaching, Jim, right there. <laughs> yeah, great coaching. Throw it to Desmond and let him run by some people. And that was your first offensive play from scratch. Start, so I guess we... I think you, you accomplished <laughs> that goal. Yeah, it, it was... Uh, well, I don't say it was really that easy, but we got some big plays at the beginning, and... Uh, 
you sometimes always worry as a coach, was it too easy or whatever, but you still got to give your kids credit as long as they're playing hard. You talked all week long before the game that Northwestern defensively came up, played you hard, played you tight, gambled a lot, and you knew you were going to be able to hit some big plays, didn't you? Go <laughs> It gives you a 7 nothing lead, and then they helped you out, too. You got to say that right. much in that big we, leader. We thought we'd get one of these, though, Jim. We thought we'd block a kick, and then uh, right here, Coleman Wallace comes through, blocks a kick, puts it on their 40-yard line, and then we come right back and get a big run from Ricky Powers off the right side, and uh, Ricky, I thought, had a great good day. He didn't have enough carries. I think he only had 11 carries, but he gained 80-some yards right here. He just about goes all the way.